Welcome back to the Stromlet Cookbook. Today, I have the pleasure of inviting JP from WeB8 to show us how to build a movie recommendation app using Stromlet and WeB8. So without further ado, let's dive in. Hey, how's it all going? My name is JP and I'm an educator at WeB8. If you don't know what WeB8 is, it's an AI native database that helps you to build amazing, scalable, and production grade AI powered apps. In this video, we'll introduce you to the Streamlit WeV8 connection, show you a demo app that's built with WeV8 and Streamlit using this connection, and then of course discuss how the Streamlit connection is used in the application. So let's get into it. Let's begin by looking at the repository for the Streamlit WeV8 connection application. What we're looking at here is the readme file for the repository. Now, we've designed this to give you an overview and of course an introduction to what the connection is and how to use it. So, the readme file covers things like what you can do with the connection. Then, you can take it step by step to learn how to install it and how to use it. It'll show you how to do things like connect to a WeV8 cloud instance, perform queries using the query or the GraphQL query methods, and of course, some more advanced things like putting in additional parameters into the query method or even using the underlying WeV8 Python client that's used under the hood. If you scroll down further, it talks about the example notebook, which we'll go through in this video in just a second, the documentation that you can refer to, and of course, the fun stuff. So the demo apps, which will show like the movie app that we have here, and also another previous app that we built called Magic Chat. Hopefully this readme file will get you started with the Streamlit WeV8 connection. So let's have a look at the connection in action through looking at our Jupyter Notebook. Here we're looking at the presentation version of the Jupyter Notebook that's in this repository. Now the Jupyter Notebook is a more of a practical guide to using this connection. So it starts off with an introduction again of what it is, but then, it'll move on to the practical elements. So how to set up your Python script to use this connection from importing things to loading any environment variables you might need. And then let's go on to how to use it. So it'll tell you that in this demo or in this example, we use a WeV8 cloud instance to connect to WeV8. And here we've set up a URL and the read-only API key so you can try it for yourself. And it'll take you step-by-step step from how to connect to a WeV8 cloud instance and straight into querying data, which the instance is pre-populated with. So if you perform a hybrid search using this connector, you can use a simple query like this to get a list of movies that matches or is most similar to your search criteria. And the next example shows you how to perform slightly more advanced queries by using additional parameters by showing you first the doc strings that's involved with it, and then applying that in practice by performing an actual search with additional parameters. If you've used this earlier version of the connection, you can use a GraphQL query just the same, but using a slightly different method name called GraphQL query. And as I've mentioned before, the Streamlit WeV8 connection uses the WeV8 Python client under the hood. So it can actually do all the things that you might do with a normal client. So here's an example of us performing RAG or retrieval augmented generation with the WeV8 client. If you want to use a local WeV8 instance instead, the connection can do that too. Just provide the URL as localhost and Streamlit will be connected to your WeV8 instance using default parameters. Of course, Streamlit can perform a secret management as well. Here's an example of that. And just FYI, of course, you can use the WeV8 client library directly, but we also think that using the Streamlit WeV8 connection directly might make it a little bit easier for you to get started with. And then if you want to use the WeV8 client directly, we've got links to the WeV8 documentation for you to have a look at. So having said all that, let's have a look at the fun stuff by looking at our demo application. Here's a demo app that we've built using Streamlit and WeV8 using the connection that you saw. I've called it Movie Magic. What it is, is an AI-based movie recommender where you can select what type of movie you're looking for and your viewing occasion. So let's try one of the example prompts to see how we go. Let's say if you wanna stay in 
and watch a sci-fi movie with a bunch of friends. So if I select that prompt and click search, you'll see the movie app in action. So first, what it's going to do is to perform a search and find the set of movies. And then it's going to go another step and make a recommendation based on those movies. In other words, it's performing retrieval augmented generation. So not only did it find those 10 movies to make the recommendation from based on your query, it's looked at those 10 movies and it's now making you a particular recommendation based on your criteria for what your occasion is. It's pretty cool, right? Let's do another search. How about an animated family film or family viewing? Of course, based on that search, you'd expect the results to be different. Let's see what happens. Great, here we go. The movies are already very, very different. And out of those movies, what recommendation will we get? Well, it looks like our recommendation engine has recommended Stuart Little 2 and Encanto. Both excellent films, and I think the reasoning behind it seems quite solid. On the left-hand side, we've got a search panel. So you can try different types of searches, whether it's keyword search, semantic, or the default, which is hybrid. There's a short explanation of each search type on the left. And you can try filtering uh, the year ranges by different numbers as well. So let's try filtering something that is in the 80s. And we'll perform the exact same search as before for an animated film. Now if I click search again, you'll notice of course now the set of movies that's been found are different to our previous search because the year range or the year criteria are different. And then the recommendation engine goes on and makes a different suggestion based on our criteria. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what's happening with a recommendation engine like this. Before we go, let's dig into the source code just a little bit to give you a little flavor of what we did to put this app together. So now we're back at the repository of our project. The app is called demo app or demo app.py. So if, and if we click through and we see here that the code base is only a couple of hundred lines long. And actually, the functional bits of that code is much, much shorter than that. The key part of this application here is the query, of course. So let's see if we can find that. Cool, here we go. So if we have a look at this query method, we can see that the query is relatively simple. All we're doing is we're querying this collection called Movie Demo. And we're searching the type of movie that the user supplied. And we're filtering by the year ranges. And we've supplied the number of results to get back. And that's our search right there. And what about the amazing recommendation part by AI? Well, that comes next. Here, we're doing retrieval augmented generation. So we're digging in actually to the VV8 client that's in the background. We're performing a very similar query but using the wv 8 client itself. And what we're doing is to provide a rag prompt on top of our search, and based on the movie's title and a tagline, asking it to provide recommendations. So all it is, is a fairly simple prompt to get the AI model to generate some sort of a recommendation based on our viewing occasion and the search results. And you can see in this app, the power of Streamlit and wv 8 together. Streamlit helps me to abstract away a lot of the difficulties involved in building an app. And the power of wv helps me to perform searches on our movie database, which has about 5,000 movies in it, to find the right movies. And then based on that, contact our large language model to generate these amazing recommendations just from a couple of lines of additional code. And the glue that holds those two things together is the Streamlit wv connection, of course. If this app was interesting to you, I would highly encourage you to dig into the code base and have a look. So maybe you'll find some inspiration in this code. And if you want to make improvements to the code base, of course, we would welcome that as well. As I mentioned before, if you want to get started with the Streamlit wv connection, have a look at the readme, have a look at the repository and the example notebook and the application. And if you want to learn more about Streamlit and wv I would encourage you to check out the documentation for both Streamlit and wv and all the other amazing videos on this channel. All right, that's it from me today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching until the end of the video. Please don't forget to smash the like button 
subscribe if you haven't already, and also hitting the notification bell to be notified of the next video. And as always, happy streamlining!